fit for 55. Is that the name of a gym membership promoting some fitness program to get you fit before you turn 55? And what about Euro 7? Well, that sounds like a new sports channel or some type of championship of seven different events. But if you're not so sure what a green deal is, or even a COP26, I really recommend you spend the next couple of minutes of your time on this video and get familiar with the most important policies influencing the development of the EV industry in Europe. Before we start, make sure to hit the subscribe button and don't forget to press the bell icon so you don't miss any updates from us. Now, you may be wondering, why should I care about the EV policy if I have nothing to do with the car industry or politics in general? Well, you're partly right. But the truth is that EV policies play a crucial role in setting the overall direction of development for the EV sector, which can affect you and your decisions too. It's important to mention that the shift in EU policies comes largely in response to the COP26 climate conference held in 2021, in which several European countries made net zero carbon emissions pledges. The COP26 in Glasgow saw stakeholders unite to accelerate a global transition to emission-free vehicles and in doing so, helping fight climate change. The agreement made during the COP26 sets out an intention that all new vehicle sales will be zero emission by 2040 and no later than 2035 in key markets. To begin with, who regulates policies related to EVs in Europe? EVs in Europe are mostly regulated by the European Commission. As you probably know, the European Commission adopted a series of legislative proposals laying out how it intends to achieve climate neutrality in the EU by 2050, including the intermediate target of at least 55% net reduction in greenhouse gas emissions by 2030. Also, it proposes to revise several pieces of EU climate legislation, setting out in real terms the ways in which the Commission intends to reach EU climate targets under the European Green Deal. And if you're planning to stay in Europe during the next 10 years, you are a part of it. So what is the European Green Deal? The Green Deal is a project marketed at making the EU climate neutral by 2050. Its aim is to work on greenhouse gas neutrality, circular economy, develop clean energies, protect humans, animals, and plants from pollution, and guarantee a fair and integrated transition. It may seem like an ambitious plan, but it's already been legally enshrined in European climate law. In 2030, the EU wants a greenhouse gas reduction of 55% compared to the pre-industrial times or compared to 1990. The vision for transportation specifically is laid on the Sustainable Smart Mobility Strategy, where the EU is targeting at least 30 million zero-emission vehicles on the roads and 3 million recharging points throughout the EU by 2030. However, new post-pandemic research shows that we're looking at 40 million electric vehicles driving around the continent by 2030. That's a massive increase from the original projections. So, reaching this goal requires a set of regulations and targets to steer states, companies, and consumers in the right direction. What is Fit for 55? Fit for 55 refers to the EU's target of reducing greenhouse gas emissions by at least 55% by 2030. The proposed package is part of the European Green Deal, and it aims to bring EU legislation in line with the 2030 goal. Within the Fit for 55 package, the Commission proposed to revise rules on CO2 emissions for cars and vans and to tighten the greenhouse gas emission standards. This means in practice that from 2035, it will no longer be possible to place cars or vans with an ICE on the market in the EU. So that means you won't be able to buy a new ICE vehicle on this continent. Sounds impressive, right? Also, it's suggested to revise the Alternative Fuels Infrastructure Regulation, which aims to ensure the appropriate uptake of public charging infrastructure. This means that every 60 kilometers, there needs to be a charging point so that if you travel by your EV, you wouldn't be afraid to run out of power. As expected, the issue of chargers has been one of the most frequently discussed in Europe. And what is Euro 7? Throughout 2021 and 2022, the EU is addressing the pollution caused by vehicles on Europe's roads to introduce a new emission standard called Euro 7 in 2025. Air pollution has been blamed for hundreds of thousands of premature deaths annually, as well as being linked to several diseases. Greenhouse gas emissions from road transport in Europe amounted to over 600 million tons of CO2 in 2020. The Euro 7 standard is likely to impose stricter testing and measurement conditions for vehicles, as well as stricter particle filter standards. New regulations could mean that most automakers will need to invest heavily in integrating new technologies into traditional vehicles, therefore making the price less competitive against EVs. And if the cost of an electric car is lower than the cost of an ICE car, then I'm sure it'll make an influence on the customers and your decisions. And what about the incentive mechanism for zero and low-level emission vehicles in Europe? 
The Incentives Program, or the so-called ZLEV, Zero and Low Emission Vehicles, credit scheme, offers strong incentives for selling electric cars from 2025 as it relaxes emission standards in proportion to the potential to reduce specific CO2 emissions. This super credit system applies for passenger cars with emissions of less than 50 grams of CO2 per kilometer. So, if the average CO2 emissions of a manufacturer's fleet exceed that amount in a given year, the manufacturer has to pay an excess emissions premium of 95 euros per grams per kilometer of target exceedance for each of its newly registered vehicles in that year. But now you might be saying, I'm not a car manufacturer, this incentive is irrelevant to me. That's true, but you too can get incentives from your government. National incentives and benefits for EVs and EV chargers vary greatly across Europe. Only some EU countries offer bonus payments or premiums to buyers of EVs, although most grant some kind of tax reduction or exemption for buyers and owners of EVs. So, make sure to check your country's policy before buying an EV. As you've probably realized, EV policies do matter, and they do accelerate the EV revolution, creating great conditions for the development and promotion of EVs. At the same time, governments are increasing their allocation to subsidies, resulting in falling prices and rising sales. So, if you are ever considering purchasing an EV, don't forget to check out the latest EV policies, regulations, and financial support in both the EU and your own country, because it can give you so many benefits and knowledge about future opportunities. Thank you for watching. Make sure to hit the subscribe button so you can receive updates on EV news in the future.